quarter was this area was not the Jewish quarter. It was known originally as the Moorish quarter, the Moorish quarter. And along most of the Wailing Wall, the Wailing Wall was the back wall of houses. There were houses built up against most of it. There was one little stretch that was left exposed. In 1967, when the Israelis took the old city, the paratroopers arrived at the Wailing Wall. Essentially, they entered through a gate, which we will show you, the Lion's Gate. The Muslims were afraid that the Dome of the Rock was going to be destroyed, hence they threw down their weapons and either surrendered or ran away. The Israelis came into an area called Ramat Rishkol. They outflanked the Muslims and entered through the Lion's Gate, taking very heavy casualties entering the old city. But once they entered, the Muslims just basically ran away. Moshe Dayan, the Israeli defense minister, made a fatal mistake. He established the Waf, the Waf, the Islamic Authority, letting them have total control of the Temple Mount. Uh, any excavation that has taken place is a Jewish excavation. What the Muslims have basically done is try to unearth anything they could find that would in any sense indicate there ever having been any Jewish presence on the Temple Mount, and they dump it into the Kidron. Then the Israeli archaeologists go through the dumped rubble and see if they can find anything of interest. It's all a political game. It's, control, it's, it's, it's controlled by the Waf. Periodically, the Muslims will begin rioting on the Temple Mount and throwing stones at the Jewish worshippers who are praying here at the Kotel, at the Wailing Wall. They'll throw stones down. This is what has usually caused the problems when you've heard of riots at the Wailing Wall or on the Temple Mount. When Ari of Sharon entered, ostensibly launching the Second Intifada in response, his visit was already prearranged with the Waf. The Muslim authorities knew he was coming and agreed to it. The entire thing was staged by them as an excuse to have an uprising. He didn't just show up one day. He went up that ramp, through that gate, and that was the beginning of it, okay? Again, we're on the western side. The Wailing Wall, the western wall, only a portion of it is exposed. Most of it is deeper down and was higher up in the time of Jesus. It was the western retaining wall. Again, it was part of this wall that Herod the Great built around the Temple Mount and filled it in to effectively double the size of the Temple Mount, creating what again remains to this day the largest man-made plateau in the world. So the Wailing Wall was not part of the Temple, it is part of the Herodian retaining wall. You see those smaller stones on top, those were not part of the original construction, those are later Turkish construction. But the stones on the bottom, the lower ones, the larger ones, those are Herodian. Those are Herodian. They were not held in place with cement, but only with a kind of mortar, a, a thin sheet of mortar. It was basically the pressure and the configuration of the stones that held it in place. They had to be cut in a certain way so that they would lock each other in. That's how the stones basically worked. I will show you the largest one when we get into the temple. This plaza was then constructed with the synagogue on the left. Down here to the left is the synagogue. Um, but officially, the entire plaza is a synagogue. The court of the women is on the right, for the men is on the left. This was then developed and redeveloped in the 1990s, as, uh, first the 80s and then redeveloped again in the 1990s after a very serious terror attack. Airline-style security was, was, was put in place after the uh, Oslo Agreement, which was supposed to bring peace and instead resulted only in terror. Again, I will point out up here, this was the upper city. It was the residence of the priests in the time of Jesus. It was the residence of the Levitical priests and the clergy in the time of Jesus, okay? Proximal to the Wailing Wall. There were connections between the upper city and the Temple Mount with arches, one of which is Robinson's Arch. I'll show you inside, or will be pointed out to us in the model. Again, what you're seeing is only a small, small, remainder of what exists in the time of Jesus. But when we get in, the model will show you all of what is there. This tunnel we're going through called the Rabbi's Tunnel. The Rabbi's Tunnel is not made under the Temple Mount. It is made directly proximal to it, proximal to the Wailing Wall. And it heads in a northerly direction. It ends not at the end of the Wailing Wall, but in a Hasmonean Tunnel. And it's a testamental period water funnel where you walk through and come out on the Via de la Rosa. On the northern side of the temple would have been Fortress Antonio, the seat of Roman power, where Jesus was put on trial before Pilate. 
We'll explain that when we get to that area, either today or tomorrow. Having said that, let's come back now to the Wailing Wall and the Temple Mount complex. In 1967, it's retaken by Israel and is reestablished as the most holy site in Judaism. Orthodox Jews, by halakha, by Jewish law, are officially not allowed to go up on it. Orthodox Jews are not allowed to go up on it because they teach that the Shekinah is still present. The Shekinah is still present, even though the Ark isn't. And you might not be the right high priest, and it might not be the Day of Atonement, and you might defile where the Holy of Holies had once been. This becomes the big issue, the location of where the temple was. Was it exactly on top of the Mosque of Omar, or was it to the north of it? There is one tradition that we will see in the tunnel, the foundation stone. This stone, they believe the Holy of Holies was to the east of it. When we get to the stone, I'll point it out to you. That is the most sacred place in the world in rabbinic Judaism. The Wailing Wall itself is the second most sacred. But that one particular stone I'll show you inside the tunnel, they say is as close as a Jew can get today to where the Holy of Holies had been, so they say. Now again, archaeologists are in dispute. There are three possible locations of the temple. You'll learn about all of them. Uh, let's go a little bit further now. The Temple Mount, when the Crusaders first arrived in the Middle Ages, they actually thought the Mosque of Omar was the Holy Temple. That's how ignorant of the Word of God they were. They didn't know the Temple was destroyed in 70 AD. <laughs> Hence the Temple, uh, they thought it was initially the Temple. The real holy site for Christians, however, was never here. It was the Church of the Holy Sepulchre nearby, which you'll also be seeing where it is. The dispute over this property is not primarily between does not involve Christians. It's primarily between Jews and Muslims. The traditional Christian site was the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is undoubtedly the most disputed city in the world, but this is the most disputed piece of real estate in the world. The most disputed piece of real estate in the world. The term Jerusalem never is even found in the Koran, but four times a city called Al-Quds, Al-Quds is named in the Koran, which some, some, later Islamic scholars have identified with Jerusalem. It was basically for political reasons. They said Al-Quds, the city where Muhammad supposedly rode up to heaven on a horse, was Jerusalem. But it was basically exploited that way for political reasons. It is basically since the 20th century, since the founding of Israel, that Muslims have begun to claim Jerusalem is one of the three holy cities of Islam, Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. However, prior to the last century, in fact, prior to the lifetime of most of us, mm -hmm. it was not considered a holy city. It was simply called that for political reasons, again, religious propaganda, political propaganda. But it's the most disputed piece of real estate there is in the world. The tunnel is dark. It's uh, not dangerous, but you will have to watch your step going up and down the stairs. They are illuminated. When we come out, though, we will be in bandit country. I don't know what the guide is going to explain or what he's going to leave to me to explain, but one way or another, you'll get the same explanation as every other group and as Ronnie's group. Now, I, we, we are due to go in at 12.40. What time do you have now? 25.12. We have 15 minutes. We have 15 minutes. Can everyone be back here in 10 minutes?